This is the Search Hustle Podcast, where we pull back the curtain and share the methods, tools, and experiences that we handle every week as digital marketers working with SMBs, franchises, e-commerce, and startups to help them grow their business. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Search Hustle Podcast. My name is Dusty. I am an employee of Search Hustle, as well as Nozak Consulting, and Brand Hawk as well. We just, uh, you know, constantly growing here at this company. But uh, part of growing is learning. And our boss, uh, partner, whatever we want to be called, William, he is constantly um, trying to stretch us, teach us, grow us. And so we are going through a book called The Next CMO. And uh, so this podcast is going to start a series on just chapter by chapter what we're learning as a company Um, As we have our weekly meetings going through this book together, we're going to give you guys some of the highlights that you can use to help grow your business. So let's uh, just, let's start out. Uh, What have we been learning guys? So for me, chapter one, hey, this is William, by the way, and uh, this is a forced book club. Yes, correct. (laughs) It is a forced book club. Yeah, forced book club. So at the bottom of page one, uh, the next CMO, the problem with operational marketing leadership. I have notes here, and just the last paragraph. As a result, the processes for managing the overall marketing function often buckle as the complexity grows, causing ineffective strategic execution and the inability to clearly demonstrate the value of the marketing function. So we work with companies that are mom and pop, husband and wife, manage it, own it, operate it, do everything, not trying to have a a single employee, all the way to companies that are Uh, very large single-scale operations, multi-locations, all the way to franchisers, um, and all the way through the gamut, SaaS, e-commerce, the whole thing. So what we I have seen as the complexity grows, right? Uh, Leads get harder to get. We have to think about more pieces of the the lead generation pipeline. And so the complexity grows. We have to track content development. We have to track video. We have to track SEO performance. We have to track ad spend and how those ads are doing, right? All these additional sheets and programs we use to get this additional uh, slice of information, it just creates this, this complexity. And so it causes strategic execution sometimes to falter, even with an agency where we've got documents, documentation, uh, software on top of the the Google Sheets that we might update in real time. And we communicate daily um, where we're always talking about people's projects. Still, we even have complexity issues at, at, at times. And that's why we're always trying to say, you know, if it can be automated, we always want to automate it. And then what am I doing continuously that we can automate? And then what can we do better as a team? Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, yeah, it says right here, you know, the the main two jobs of a CMO are uh, defining and executing strategy and then measuring the true returns. And we have to pivot all the time with our strategies. Mm-hmm. So we don't set one strategy and then die on that hill regardless. No, we want our clients Die or to win. win. Die yeah. or win. Right, exactly. Most of ours are win. Yeah, Knock 100%. On wood. At some point, you end up dying because things change. Sometimes. You stay. Absolutely. The strategy dies. Strategy yeah. dies. Yep. Yeah. So, well, does the strategy die or do competitors just all adopt it and then uh, you have to get the new strategy to leg up? Yeah. One of my favorite quotes, I don't know who it's attributed to, is that marketers ruin everything. We find <laughs> something that works and we run it into the so freaking true. ground. Yeah. And then once everybody's done it and it's worthless, we yeah. have to find a new strategy. Yeah. I think page two, uh, the fundamental responsibilities of the CMO, like you said, set goals. You know, for us at our agency, Nozak Consulting, we're continuously looking at what, where is a client in the digital landscape? What, how can we move the needle and at what cost points and how far, you know, what price points are they looking at? Um, You know, so we might present to them like three different price points and say, hey, here's how far we think we can move the needle. Here's a a larger frequency of things we can do for you. Here's more hands on time. So like setting the goals with if you're a marketer or new in the space, really understanding 
where someone's trying to go. Like, well, how many times have you had a, a potential lead walk in here and say, oh, we have no cash flow? And Dusty, do you remember that one time we had a, a potential client walk in and say, we have no cash flow, we have a following on Instagram, but we want to do $10 million next year? Yeah, our, our, our goal is $10 million. And we're like, like, let's well, baby steps, man. I don't baby think steps. you're a good fit here. So for one, <laughs> understanding goals as a, yeah. a, a person, defining and then redefining. It's like in marketing, we call it iteration, or like uh, hypothesis making, hypothesis breaking. I have a, a, a science background, a chemistry degree. And so everything I do in marketing, I try to act like a chemist. D I set a hypothesis and then I break it. I make mm -hmm. Dusty do it all the time with ads. Hey, you, will this work? We haven't tested it. Then you don't know. Test it, try it. Did it work? No, change. Same thing with web yep. development. Hey, are we getting leads, uh, higher frequency leads? Everything is in iteration in marketing. 100%. What I think maybe it's personally I struggle with or maybe even as a company that we struggle with is we're great at setting goals. We're great at defining our strategies and our client strategies. We give away free strategy um, to, to businesses, as they call us. We'll give them a free 30-minute strategy session, just kind of tell them what they need in their space. Uh, we build a plan. They execute the plan. We optimize the plan that ch when change happens. But I think where we fail is we – fail to communicate the results to our clients because our clients, most of the time as marketers, they have no idea what we're doing. They just know that they're writing a check to us. And that's and why they often say, you know, am I buying snake oil? Cause really people, mm -hmm. cause they've been under communicated to. Right. And so, or lied to. So a lot of times I feel like I'm defending ourselves cause I pull up, okay, well here's what you're ranking for now. Here's how you're so like the, they're great results, but I didn't communicate to the client those results. So they, those ex to them, those results don't exist. Yeah, or it's goal misalignment. Mm -hmm. Those results aren't the results they wanted. True. And so we have to have some measure of results that translates into the language that the client speaks in order to keep them as a cl happy client. I assure you the language that the client speaks is, are you bringing me more leads? Yep. And are those leads turning into sales? It, we could show them how we're crushing it on every front, spending less, how the pages are winning, and they're super optimized against the other pages in the top 10 SERPs. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to always get better at communication. Communication is is key, really, to uh, shutting your back door in, in our space. Um, how where we get leads all the time from our own efforts. And when we get those leads, we want to maximize the LTV of the client. How do we do that? Well, one, we do what we say we're going to do. But two, like you said, Dusty, we got just got to be good, better about communicating results and expectations. So we're managing expectations. We're communicating results. And then we're iterating, right? What was the book we read together, the red one? It was... Um, flywheel. The, the flywheel. You know, is that the name of it, the flywheel? Uh Turning of the flywheel. Turning of the flywheel, yep. So we, we wrote in our flywheel on our wall, and, and we should go through that book too. Like We wrote out a flywheel on our wall that no client's left behind, no matter what price point. So, you know, we've had, we have to take, we have a couple different personas, uh, small business owners that need tons and tons of work but don't have a huge budget. And we, we love those challenges, but at the same time, our, our scale is expensive. Like uh, the number of professionals we have in this building, it just, it doesn't pay for itself. And then we've got another persona is like enterprise level business where they have the money, they trust you, um, they don't really all the time have time to communicate, but they, um, but they're hard because the competition also has big budgets and they've been in the game. And so you're fighting uphill. Sometimes you've yeah. got franchisers who have the money and have large scope projects that are a lot of fun all the way from SaaS and e-commerce commerce. And so we're managing how well we're doing with the client, managing their expectations and then moving our own needles in house uh, against their expectations. And, and really, you know, what's the reality after we get our fingers in this and get our hands dirty, how well are we doing? Right, exactly. And I think that's, I mean, that's pretty much how this chapter wraps up talking about that the, you know, this book is primarily dedicated to helping you lay out a framework uh, for your operation. Um, and so we'll, we look forward to going through the rest of these chapters with you guys and going through the recommended framework, sharing with you how we've adapted it to our operation and going over some other scenarios, how you guys can adapt it. Uh, whether you're a one-man band or you're a growing agency. So we'll see you next week. All right, Dusty, take us out.
Thanks for listening to the Search Hustle podcast. If you're interested in learning more about digital marketing and taking your knowledge to the next level, be sure to check out searchhustle.com, where we've got tons of free content, stuff that we use every week to market businesses, as well as our in-depth digital marketing course. Start your Search Hustle today at searchhustle.com. Tell me when you're good. Okay, so this is the addendum. Okay, so uh, really page three, assessing the gaps, inadequate or completely absent goals, right? We're always trying to set those with, with companies, with, with uh, marketing managers, owners. And then um, in practice, many marketing teams either don't have clear goals or the goals aren't well communicated through the organization. That's when the, they come in and say, we make no money, we want to make $10 million. Uh, Even part of that on page four, a plan that is not designed to achieve your goals. So like we, we've scoped people out on what we're you know what we're providing um but without that goal alignment that's what that communication you're continually talking about is is are we aligning with their goals yes we set this plan out because sometimes the clients we get in here at an agency they have no footprint they have no foundation so like year one often is like just to lay down the foundation for them Mm -hmm. but then they're like ooh. You know, we, we want to dominate the SERPs. That's not reality. And usually in a year one or early on in a process, you, we have to keep helping them to understand that, look, you're still just trying to catch up. Yeah, this so. is where it says the bigger issue is whether the plan is the right one. It's not whether that we have a good plan. It's that yeah. the plan the right one for the client. And, sometimes- and so we have to keep communicating to these guys because they, they may lose hope. We're their CMO. You know what I mean? We're, we're these company CMOs. We have to communicate the needle movements, uh, the movement in SERPs. Hey, when you started with us, you didn't even have Google Search Console. When we popped Google Search Console, the very next week, we saw you had three keywords that you ranked for in Google. And as of right now, six months later, you rank for 10,000. And and those very important bottom of the funnel keywords that we feel like are convertible, your local SEO now ranks with your GMB and your website. And you've got ads covering keywords that... So communicating these wins, even when it feels like, man, how long is this road? The truth is, is all these different niches that we're in, they have different lengths of a run ro- runway. I think like you get so excited about these topics, you almost make yourself pass out for not breathing. And yeah, just, just, just say uh, breathe and, it, it, yeah. and it'll be passion can you, can you is just, real. Uh, just remind me for just, a second. <laughs> um, page five, ineffective execution. The bigger issue is whether the plan is the right one and designed to achieve your objectives. So... You know, we're, we're scoping to the best of our ability when somebody calls us. What, and that's why we ask them questions. You know, what do you typically spend in a month on digital marketing? What other marketing avenues do, do you use? What items are your line items on your marketing plan? Do you have billboards? Do you use radio? Do you use television? Are you just solely word of mouth? Like, we're, we need to understand what footprint they have. Uh, non-line and online so we can really help them to understand, well, this is how far we can get in this time or we can do this higher package and take you so much faster. Um, any other comments on that one? Page six, I have a comment. Return on marketing plan. So um, so we, want, we always want to think of return on investment for, for business owners, right? They're going to invest money in their digital footprint. And I always like to tell them, you know, SEO and web development, this isn't uh, an advertising spend. This is more of like an investment in your business because when you go to sell it or pass it down, it goes with the business. And assuming you've built it well enough, it can last nine, 10 years in some cases, but the bedrock is there for the next development. If you're just refreshing the design and and the footprint. So you guys have any comments on anything like that? No, I think that's right on as far as it being an investment. Uh, the return on the marketing plan itself, I feel like that's, you know, something that we have to assess as far as like a strip from a strategic standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the client's looking at the ROI, the total return on their investment. And it's our job as the CMO to look at the marketing plan, the strategy that we've put in place yeah. and, and measure that return. I only have two more comments on mine. Page seven, measure what can be measured. While a typical B2B marketer spends less than 20% of their budget on digital activities, their reporting is typically dominated by digital insights. Um, And so this is really just us trying to make those connections of leads and sales to our work where, you know, Dusty, you're always trying to get um, Google phone numbers so that you can say, hey, these are true calls that came from our efforts. And 
And of course, I'm always pushing and pulling with you saying, well, I don't want those phone numbers in places where it could mess with our name, address, phone, our NAP. And so we've got this, uh, this measurability of money spent and leads that are attributed. Um, and this is where we run into a client saying, well, we just don't know if we need your service. I mean, we, we were up 100% this year, yeah. had the best year of our, of our How lives. How many times have we heard like, man, it's just really slow. And then at the end of the year, they're like, yeah, we grew like by best, 25%. Best year percent. ever, but yeah. right. we're going to go with this other company. Yeah, and okay. it's like, wait a minute. Hey. And that's kind of the hard world that we live in as marketers is yeah. that we are 100% accountable to all the data. And Google and Facebook, they're hiding that data nowadays. They're not sharing it anymore, yet we're still... 100% accountable to those clicks, but yet we're only 20% of their actual marketing budget. And so we talked about today, I think, just about how we need to maybe help as being a company CMO, not just their web developer, but being more of a CMO mindset of talking through their offline strategies. Like where is the other parts of their budget mm -hmm. going? You know, when they buy mm -hmm. 100 t-shirts to give away at a football game, they're not asking what their ROI is. For or that. how much they spent on it and like, yeah, that's just they, that's direct just mail. Known. You know, direct mail stuff. They're not like billboards. I mean, that's a huge radio yeah. ads. How much money do we blow on radio ads? Way too much money. I mean, think how many times they've spent you know money on shirts, like a hundred shirts, and they just sit there in a box and like you know what I mean. That's, oh gosh, that's okay. This all right. I have yeah, one last point. Oh man, shots fired. <laughs> one I last might, point. I may or may not have ordered a couple thousand dollars. There's of shirts a story there. We uh, had the oh, wrong logo okay. on them. Okay, Source spot there. Anyway, uh, last comp last point here. An awareness campaign can take many months to move the needle. As a result, build. Content marketing efforts require consistent publishing, tweaking, promotion over a long period of time to build a real audience, right? So that's really what we're taking on people with with our clients with the digital space. One, we, we run a lot of, of, of ads trying to get leads down the pipeline quickly. Two, for other clients, we're, we're managing email marketing to hot lists or or lists that are coming in from the company. Three, we're, we're managing their, their website so that the traffic that they currently get converts better and feels more confident, confident to spend money with them. But also, additionally, if they have no footprint, we're creating content and pages that hopefully rank better for them wherever mm -hmm. their buyers are, whether that's at the local, the regional, the national, the international, and then every other component, making sure that we're tracking it, looking at the data, seeing where the referrers and the traffic are coming from, making sure they're doing stuff in the their social media, making sure if they've got a local presence that the GMB is getting posted to, that the reviews are getting responded to, that we understand what we're good at, what we're bad at, that people are getting, rev um, that we're doing uh, surveying when we can. And all these pieces of the pipeline are the storyline. Not to mention, this stops at impression, click, lead, sale. Right. Now we don't we, we don't do sales training with our clients. We have some onboarding training, but this is really the client understanding that how do I do the same thing and have the same experience and really push every lemon drop out of these leads I'm getting and really we find that companies we could bring them all the leads in a day but they really aren't calling them back in time you know you might give them a lead on Thursday and they might call it on Tuesday or like you, you know what I mean like there's yeah. just there's no process and they're in not place. garnering reviews yeah and clients. they're not getting reviews from people that love them and they're not pushing L LTV uh, look nobody gets this right even we struggle with these things but these are things that you have to look at and keep your pul keep the pulse of to, in order to maximize every dollar you spend it's a lot like physical conditioning you think about it we're we're really like someone's coach or like a trainer mm -hmm. you have all these different aspects of marketing uh you know whether it's running ads or organic and then you have to make sure the mix is right and then the client changes their business. It's just like how Adds your service, body can change. Yep. Yeah, tells you they have a new persona. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, and then uh, that basically wraps up chapter one. Uh, says from here, the rest of the book is dedicated to laying out a framework to help marketers improve their operational capabilities. So we're going to go through the rest of these chapters with you guys and look forward to sharing uh, what that framework is, how we're adapting it, and how you guys can adapt it to your business as well. Thanks for listening to the Search Hustle podcast. If you're interested in learning more about digital marketing, and taking your knowledge to the next level, be sure to check out searchhustle.com, where we've got tons of free content Stuff that we use every week to market businesses as well as our in-depth digital marketing course. Start your search hustle today at searchhustle.com.